I apologize. It's starting the stream right now. You guys are now live on YouTube. Will the House please come to order? Mr. Secretary of State, it's my pleasure to introduce and members and members of the public, uh, welcome. And it's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Karen Wheeler, Deputy, Deputy Secretary of State, the Honorable Edward A. Buchanan, Secretary of State, and the Honorable Kate M. Fox, Wyoming Supreme Court Justice. If you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The prayer this afternoon will be given by Representative Evan Simpson. Please join me in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we pause for a moment at the beginning of our legislative session to acknowledge thee. We're so grateful to live in a beautiful state that we call Wyoming. We acknowledge the bountiful freedoms and liberties that we enjoy here in our daily lives. Father, this past year has been a difficult one for our citizens. The pandemic has caused great strife and chaos. Many people have lost loved ones. As we look forward to 2021, we pray for safety, health, and prosperity. May we come together as Wyomingites and cast aside disparity and hatred. May the evil influences around us be exposed and goodness prevail. Father, we pray for our, the men and women who serve in the armed forces. We ask that thou would protect them and watch over them, particularly those serving in foreign countries. We pray that they will be able to return home to their families in safety. We pray for the frontline service people in our state. We're so grateful for their service and their dedication to keeping us safe. Please keep them safe from harm. Now, as we prepare for this legislative session, we ask that thou would bless us with wisdom. We desire to, to introduce and pass laws that are good for our citizens and also respectful of thy commandments. We offer this prayer unto thee, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Deputy Secretary of State, Karen Wheeler, will please call the roll of the House of Representatives and report. Roll call for the 66th Legislature, House of Representatives, starting with House District 1. Chip Nyman. House District 2, Hans Hunt. Here. House District 3, Eric Barlow. Present. House District 4, Jeremy Haroldson. House District 5, Shelley Duncan. House District 5, Shelley Duncan. Excused. House District 6, Aaron Clausen. Here. 
House District 7, Sue Wilson. Here. House District 8, Bob Nicholas. Here. House District 9, Landon J. Brown. House District 10, John Eklund. Here. House District 11, Jared Olson. Here. House District 12, Clarence Stivar. Present. House District 13, Kathy Connolly. Here. House District 14, Trey Sherwood. Here. House District 15, Donald Burkhart. Here. House District 16, Mike Yin. Here. House District 17, Chad M. Banks. Here. House District 18, Scott Heiner. Present. House District 19, Danny Ayer. Here. House District 20, Albert Summers. Here. House District 21, Evan J. Simpson. Here. House District 22, Jim Roscoe. Here. House District 23, Andy Schwartz. Here. House District 24, Sandy Newsom. Here. House District 25, Dan Larson. Here. House District 26, Jamie Flintner. Here. House District 27, Mike Greer. House District 28, John R. Winter. Here. House District 29, Mark S. Kinner. House District 29, Mark S. Kinner. Excused. House District 30, Mark Jennings. Here. House District 31, John Bear. Here. House District 32, Timothy Hallinan. Here. House District 33, Andy Clifford. Here. House District 34, Pepper L. Ottman. Here. House District 35, Joe McGuire. Present. House District 36, Art Washett. Here. House District 37, Steve Harshman. Here. House District 38, Tom Walters. Here. House District 39, Marshall A. Burt. Here. House District 40, Barry Crago. Present. House District 41, Bill Henderson. Here. House District 42, Jim Blackburn. Present. House District 43, Dan Zawanaser. Here. House District 44, John B. Romero Martinez. House District 44, John B. Romero Martinez. Present on the floor. Thank you. House District 45, Carly Provenza. Here. House District 46, Ocean Andrew. Here. House District 47, Jerry Paxton. Here. House District 48, Clark Stiff. Here. House District 49, Robert A. Wharf. Here. House District 50, Rachel Rodriguez Williams. Present. House District 51, Cyrus Western. Here. House District 52, Bill Fortner. Here. House District 53, Christopher R. Knapp. Present. House District 54, Lloyd Charles Larson. Here. House District 55, Amber Oakley. Here. House District 56, Jerry Obermuller. Here. House District 57, Chuck Gray. Here. House District 58, Patrick Pat Sweeney. Here. 
House District 59, Kevin C. O'Hearn. Present. And ending with House District 60, Mark Baker. Here. Mr. Secretary, all members of the 66th Legislature, House of Representatives are present. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am proud, very proud to be back before this body exactly 10 years after my own nomination as Speaker of the House. And so I have a special place in my heart for the institution and for all those with whom I've served, as, as well as the staff whose service uh, to this institution is peerless. Mr. Speaker-elect, members of leadership, I congratulate you on the new role you are about to undertake, and I deeply appreciate the opportunity to work with you and your leadership team, both this session and beyond. And to the entire House, the incumbents, as well as the newly elected, I join so many others that are deeply appreciative of the time you take away from your families and from your professions to serve the constituents all across our great state. You truly exemplify what it is to be a public servant. And it's with a deep sense of commitment and hopeful purpose that we come together, the executive and legislative branches, to strive and develop and implement policies that are that are fair and just to both limit government, but also to provide for the general welfare of the people of the great state of Wyoming. I do believe that in Wyoming, we hold high standards for our legislative process. We strive to legislate and govern in a way that makes other states both envious of our ability to interact as citizens and neighbors and also long for the way things used to be. But in Wyoming, we still have that like it used to be. And the torch has been passed to each of you to maintain and improve our heritage. The respect each of us has for this institution and for one another, and as importantly, the process makes the role of an elected official in Wyoming an honor, a privilege, and a responsibility. I'd like now to briefly discuss with you the work of my office and some areas in which I believe we can collaborate. I'd like to begin by thanking the staff and the Secretary of State's office. They are a small group of only 30 individuals. They work together to cover a huge variety of duties. And in doing so, contributed to the $57 million of revenue generated by our office in the last biennium. That is an increase of $8.1 million over the previous biennium. They are indeed a hardworking group and they continually strive to maximize efficiencies across our office. And I'd also like to say a special thanks to our information technology staff who during these challenging times have pivoted very adeptly to allow us to telework, be in the office, and overall meet the, the needs of our constituents and our customers statewide. And next, I'd like to thank you, the legislature. You allowed us the funding for the purchase of new election equipment for all 23 of our Wyoming counties. And as a result of that authorization, you contributed to an incredibly smooth 2020 election cycle. I'm also extremely grateful, not only to my election staff, but to all 23 county clerks and their staffs who met so many challenges in 2020 with grace and professionalism. Ours is a partnership that ensures superb election management and culminated in the execution of a nearly flawless election. And despite the challenges of 2020, our election was fair, it was secure, and it was efficient. 
with the new equipment, we wanted to emphasize efficiency, yes, but more importantly, security. During my tenure, I have sought to update our election code to ensure that we continue to be the benchmark to which other states aspire. And I will appreciate any and all support and efforts by this body to maintain the integrity of our election in the years to come. Elections must be accessible, they must be transparent, they must be accountable, and most of all, secure. These standards I set are not always synonymous with sheer convenience, but convenience is not the goal. Accessibility and opportunity are the goal. And I continue to believe that voting is a right that citizens must undertake with both pride and a modicum of self-initiative. On another front, our business division remained open during the challenging time that was 2020, and our online filing system gave our citizens the ability to form businesses and access to business documents seven days a week, 24 hours a day from the safety of their homes. My office continues to prioritize excellent customer service and the reinforcement of Wyoming's business friendly reputation. So to advance our united goal, the expansion of that reputation, I stand ready to work together with you on a measured approach in utilizing new technology. And in looking towards continued efficiencies, we are eager to work with you to modernize our Notaries Public Act and simplify access to Wyoming notaries for our citizens. Now, beyond the statutory duties of my office, my fellow statewide elected officials and myself serve together in the capacity as the State Board of Land Commissioners, the State Building Commission, and the State Loan and Investment Board. And as members of state government, we are abundantly aware of the dire financial situation we currently face. We have a constitutional duty to provide funding to the Common School Land Fund. And in that capacity, I know that I and my fellow members take seriously our fiduciary duty to consider all options for these public lands, mining, grazing, forestry, recreation. The importance of balancing multiple uses of this land is felt very closely by members of the board. In fiscal year 2020, the amount of income generated by state lands, which was deposited to both the Common School Permanent Fund and the Common School Income Fund, totaled over $98 million, a result of a robust multiple use policy. As members of the State Loan and Investment Board, we also oversaw the distribution of coronavirus relief grants, providing support for Wyoming's cities, towns, and counties as they dealt with the economic impact of the pandemic. The board worked hand in hand with the governor's office, the Office of State Lands and Investment, and the attorney general's office to ensure these federal funds were quickly awarded to local governments, healthcare facilities, first responders, among others, all while ensuring compliance with the federal guidance regarding distribution. And I'd like to say a special thanks to my fellow board members, Governor Mark Gordon, Treasurer Meyer, Auditor Racinus, and Superintendent Balo. Wyoming is fortunate to have a robust board that has policy discussions and works very well together. We have those policy discussions and we don't always agree, but we are singular in our focus to do what's best for Wyoming. In closing, you face some incredible challenges in the current environment. This session will be difficult. Your work is hard. Your work will sometimes feel like it's thankless, but I want each of you to know that you have the sincerest thanks from a former speaker and you have the sincerest thanks from a grateful state. Even in the hardest of debates, 
and the toughest of votes, I want you to look to your colleagues because the people of the legislative institution are its greatest asset. And that is one of the reasons that I have always said that next to the joy of family, my service to the legislature was the greatest experience of my life. So for the newly elected, be proud of where you are and be humble in your service to the people of Wyoming. And I will continue to work side by side with you in my role as Secretary of State. We're going to accomplish great things for Wyoming. And while the task is great, I know you stand ready to guide the state home. I know you stand ready to fulfill the promise of the great state of Wyoming. I truly believe that our best days lie ahead of us. And I look forward to arriving at that destination together with you. So thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless Wyoming. And God bless our great nation, the United States of America. I will now accept nominations. I will now accept nominations for temporary speaker. Mr. Secretary, I move Rep Representative Rep Steve Rep Harshman for temporary speaker. You've heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion to elect Representative Steve Harshman as temporary speaker, please raise your hand. And as we're scrolling through here, okay, all right. And opposed, please raise your hand. The motion has carried. Temporary Speaker Harshman. Okay, hey, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, Members, this meeting will uh, please come to order. I would now accept uh, nominations for the temporary chief clerk, uh, Representative Brown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move Wendy Harding as temporary chief clerk. Okay, you've heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. I'll scroll the screens. Okay, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, Wendy Harding now is our temporary chief clerk. Uh, we're at that order of business now of a report of the Credentials Committee. Pursuant to Article 3, Section 10 of the Wyoming Constitution, the Credentials Committee, consisting of Representative Zwanitzer as the chairman, Representatives Henderson, McGuire, Sweeney, and Walters, met on January 6, 2021, and reviewed the certified list of the elected and appointed members and finds it to be in order. The temporary chief clerk, would you please read the report? Your credentials committee has received a certified copy of the duly elected members of the House of Representatives for the 66th legislature of the state of Wyoming, according to the certificates of the state canvassing board as filed in the office of the secretary of state. We have read the letter from the Campbell County commissioners appointing Christopher Knapp to fill the vacancy in House District 53. We have reviewed all documents and find them to be accurate. I move adoption of this report, signed Representative Zawanitzer, Chairman. Okay, you've all heard the motion, the adoption. Now, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, I'll scroll these four screens. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Okay, the certified list, that motion is carried. We are now at that order of business, members of the election uh, of Speaker of the House, and I would like to receive nominations from the floor. Uh, Representative Burkhart. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker. It is my great honor that I nominate Representative Eric Barlow as Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming Legislature. 
Okay, Representative Conley. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker. I second the nomination of Representative Eric Barlow and call for a roll call vote. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that Representative Eric Barlow be elected Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming Legislature with a roll call vote. The temporary chief clerk, will you please call the roll? Andrew. Aye. Baker. Aye. Banks. Aye. Fair. Aye. Blackburn. Aye. D Brown. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Burt. Aye. Clawson. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Crago. Aye. Duncan, excused. Aye. Oh, Duncan, aye. Eklund? Aye. Ayer? Aye. Flitner? Aye. Fortner? Aye. Aye. Gray. Aye. Greer. Hallinan. Aye. Haroldson. Aye. Harshman. Aye. Heiner. Aye. Henderson. Aye. Hunt. Aye. Jennings. Jennings. Aye. Kenner. Kenner? Excused. Knapp? Aye. Larson Lloyd? Aye. Larson Dan? Larson Dan? Aye. McGuire? Aye. Martinez. Aye. Nyman. Aye. Newsom. Aye. Nicholas. Aye. Oakley. Aye. Obermuller. Aye. O'Hearn. Aye. Olson. Aye. Ottman. Aye. Paxton. Aye. Provenza. Aye. Roscoe. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. Sherwood. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Summers. Aye. Stiff. Aye. Stivar. Aye. Sweeney. Aye. Walters. Aye. Wash it. Aye. Western. Aye. Four. Aye. Williams. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Winter. Aye. Yin. Aye. Zawanitzer. Aye. Mr. Speaker. Aye. Closing vote. Are there any changes? Closing vote. The vote is closed, 59 aye, one excuse. Okay, I think um, we had a little technology block there. Chief Clerk Harding, could you just announce the, the vote one more time, please? Yes, sir. We had 59 ayes one excused. Okay, thank you. Uh, representatives, Eric Barlow has been elected Speaker of the Wyoming House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming Legislature.
works. I am going to use my computer camera and audio, and I would like to at this time uh, welcome Justice Fox as she will administer the oath of office to our newly elected speaker. And I would just want to make sure I get this, and I'm going to unplug. And I ask folks to give us a little grace as we work through this technology. I think folks on the YouTube can see Speaker Barlow. Thank you, Justice Fox. Hi, Eric Barlow. Hi, Eric Barlow. Having been elected as a member. Having been elected as a member. Of the House of Representatives. Of the House of Representatives. Of the state of Wyoming. Of the state of Wyoming. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wyoming. And the Constitution of the State of Wyoming. That I have not knowingly violated any law. That I have not knowingly violated any law. Related to my election or appointment. Related to my election. Or caused it to be done by others. Or caused it to be done by others. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. And I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Speaker, congratulations. Okay. Members, we are at that order of business of election of the Speaker Pro Tem. The House will now receive nominations for Speaker Pro Tempore from the floor. Representative Paxton. Representative Flitner. I, nom I nominate Representative Mike Greer. Did I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, I could not hear Representative Paxton. Did he nominate Mr. Greer? My apologies. Representative Paxton, would you restate the nomination so the audience can hear? Can you, can you hear me now? Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I nominate Mike Greer to serve as Speaker Pro Tem for the 66th legislature of the state of Wyoming. Represent, Representative Flitner. I second the nomination of Representative Mike Greer and call for a roll call vote. Members, it has been moved and seconded that Representative Mike Greer be elected Speaker Pro Tem of the House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming legislature with a roll call vote. The temporary chief clerk will please call the roll. Andrew. Aye. Baker. Aye. Banks. Aye. Bear. Aye. Blackburn. Aye. Brown. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Burt. Aye. Clausen. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Crago. Aye. Duncan. Aye. Eklund. Aye. Ayer. Aye. Flitner. Aye. Fortner. Aye. Gray. Aye. Greer. Mm, aye. Hallinan. Aye. Haroldson. Aye. Harshman. Aye. Heiner. Aye. Henderson. Aye. 
Hunt. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Kenner. Excused. Excused. Now. Aye. Larson Lloyd. Aye. Larson Dan. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Martinez. Martinez? I, okay. I noted on the floor. Nyman. Aye. Newsom. Aye. Nicholas. Aye. Oakley. Aye. Obermuller. Aye. O'Hearn. Aye. Olson. Aye. Ottman. Aye. Paxton. Aye. Provenza. Aye. Roscoe. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. Sherwood. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Summers. Aye. Stiff. Aye. Stivar. Aye. Sweeney. Aye. Walters. Aye. Washit. Aye. Western. Aye. Wharf. Aye. Williams. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Winter. Aye. Yin. Aye. Zwanitzer. Aye. Mr. Speaker. Aye. Closing vote. Are there any changes? Closing vote. The vote is closed. 59 aye, one excused. Members, by a roll call vote of 59 ayes and one excused, Representative Mike Greer has been elected the Speaker Pro Tem of the House of Representatives of the 66th Wyoming Legislature. Representative Grimm. Justice Fox, would you please administer the oath of office to our newly elected Speaker O'Tem? Tim? Justice Fox, please accept our deepest gratitudes for taking the time to administer the oath of office to the House of, House of Rep, in the House of Representatives today. And please extend our gratitude to Chief Justice Davis for administering oaths all last week. Uh, we sincerely appreciate both of your time, dedication, and duty to us in the state of Wyoming. Thank you, ma'am. All right, members, um, thank you very much. At this time, it's, it's uh, generally our um, tradition that the officers, both the speaker, the speaker pro tem, the majority and minority floor leaders give addresses to the body. Um, and this is often, you know, welcoming and congratulating and, and asking for support on different issues. 
this year, because of the format we're, we're meeting in and our sincerest hope that we meet in person in the not too distant future, we're going to um, delay those addresses. So the good news is they're not today. The, the, the next note is we will have them when we come together in person. However, I'm gonna take a privilege at this time in the absence of those um, addresses by, the, by those um, officers of the body. I'm gonna take a privilege um, to remember a member who is not with us today. And uh, Speaker Harshman, former Speaker Harshman, former President Perkins, myself, and I hope current President Dockstetter at the other end had a resolution, um, a memorial um, developed in recognition of Roy Edwards. As many of you know, and I'm not going to read the entire resolution, but I'll just show it. Um, I guess the picture isn't very good on the screen. Those in the chamber can see it from a distance. But the resolution, um, I'll read the, the preamble and then I'll read the final. A memorial providing for recognition of the Honorable Roy H. Edwards, who served as a representative from Campbell County in the state, Wyoming State Legislature, expressing deep appreciation for his distinguished service to his city, county, and state, and further expressing the deep depth of our sorrow on behalf of the residents of Wyoming. And there are many whereases um, about his service, about his work, about his outdoorsmanship, about his belief in our republic and the constitution, about this committee, the committees he served on and the work he did, and of course his family. His wife Glenda, son Mitch, daughter Miriam Mariah, son Mason, and grandchildren, brothers and sisters. It is therefore resolved by the members of the legislature of the state of Wyoming that we express our profound sense of loss created by the passing of our beloved friend, leader, and extend our sympathies to the family of our fellow legislator and dedicated public servant. And furthermore, we will transmit this memorial to the family um, so that they may know the sense of sorrow and loss suffered by the people of, of Wyoming by virtue of his passing. Drew Perkins, Steve Harshman, Dan Dockstetter, Eric Barlow. And members, it's traditional that when we do these memorials and uh, different things, we have a signature page for all members who would like to add their name to it. And so that'll be arranged so that folks that want to sign this resolution that we've forwarded to the family, you can do that. Um, and we'll have that arranged so you can uh, get that done, it'll probably be in the speaker's office and it'll be just set up and you can just walk in and sign your name and the, the, uh, the memorial will be there too. So thank you for that privilege. The chair recognizes Majority Floor Leader Summers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that the following named persons be placed in nomination as employees of the House of Representatives and they be voted on collectively. The temporary chief clerk will read the names of the employees and their respective positions. Wendy Harding, chief clerk. John Earnshaw, reader, assistant chief clerk. Cindy Farwell, staff supervisor. Pam Landry, majority leadership secretary. Rick Kessler, sergeant at arms. Thank you. You have heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion adopting the uh, employees in the respective positions, please raise your hand to the screen. All those opposed. Thank you, the motion has carried. Um, before we uh, proceed to our next um, item of business for the members and for the public joining us, please take note that His Honor, His Excellency, the Governor, Mark Gordon, will deliver an address to, the, to us and the body in the state of Wyoming at two o'clock, and we will break at that time to receive that message. 
We are now that order of business of amending and adopting temporary rules. Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that the permanent house and joint rules of the 65th legislature be adopted by the House as the temporary rules of the House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming Legislature General Session. You have heard the motion to adopt the permanent house and joint rules of the 65th legislature as the temporary rules for the House of Representatives for the 66th Wyoming Legislature General Session. A majority vote is required for adoption of the motion. The Chief Clerk will call the roll. Andrew. Aye. Baker. Aye. Banks. Aye. Fair. Aye. Blackburn. Aye. Brown. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Burt. Aye. Clawson. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Crago. Aye. Duncan. Aye. Eklund. Aye. Ayer. Aye. Flitner. Aye. Fortner. Aye. Gray. Aye. Greer. Aye. Hallinan. Aye. Henders or Haroldson. Aye. Harshman. Aye. Heiner. Aye. Henderson. Aye. Hunt. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Kenner. Excused. Excused. Now. Aye. Larson Lloyd. Aye. Larson Dan. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Martinez. Aye. Nyman. Aye. Newsom. Aye. Nicholas. Aye. Oakley. Aye. Obermuller. Aye. O'Hearn. Aye. Olson. Aye. Ottman. Aye. Paxton. Aye. Provenza. Aye. Roscoe. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. Sherwood. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Summers. Aye. Stiff. Aye. Stivar. Aye. Sweeney. Aye. Walters. Aye. Washit. Aye. Western. Aye. Or. No. Williams. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Winter. Aye. Yin. Aye. Zawanitzer. Aye. Mr. Speaker. Aye. Closing vote. Are there any changes? Closing vote. Vote is closed. 58 aye, one no, one excused. The motion has been adopted. Mr. Majority Mr. Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move joint rule 0001, proposing the temporary house and joint rules of the 66 Wyoming State Legislature be amended by repealing joint rule 23 and recreating it. 2021 general session applicable to this general session. Um, Mr. Speaker, I will walk uh, the body through the amendment. And uh, ladies and gentlemen of the 66, that's the first time I've got a chance to say that. I, I do welcome you. And so this is joint rules uh, amendment, joint rule 0001. And uh, in really, if you go down through this 23-1 and you look at subsection A, it allows membership members to sign by electronic means. Um, if you go into uh, subsection B, um, it al allows members to attend remotely during the session and provides rules for remote voting. And specifically, if you look at this uh, in subsection B, members who attend the 2021 general session remotely shall be considered present. And then when you get down there, when visible with a live video stream while on a meeting platform and then further, the next sentence, members who attend any committee meeting during the 2021 general session remotely shall be considered present as well uh, when, with, when visible with a live video stream while on the meeting platform. 
And then the last sentence is, is kind of the, the third piece of this um, particular subsection, and that is the presiding officers and the chairman while in committee of the whole or standing committee meetings may determine the appropriate means of voting for remote participants, including but not limited to the showing of hands or roll call. And then uh, finally, Mr. Speaker, subsection C and D, this just allows our standing committees to meet without using up session days. And if you specifically look in subsection C, Mr. Speaker, on the, that part that's quoted in those quotes, legislative working day means every day of the week when our, either the Senate or the House convenes exclusive of Sundays, the meeting or action of a legislative committee on a day on which neither house is in session shall not constitute a legislative working day and shall not be included among the legislative working days of the session. And so just to wrap it up, uh, Mr. Speaker, really what this does is replace a uh, special session remote virtual rule with one that would be applicable, applicable going forward in any uh, remote session we might have going forward. So. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I will stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Majority Florida. You've heard the motion. Is there further discussion on the motion? Further discussion on the motion. I'm scrolling through the screen. To recognize any member who wants to discuss. Representative Larson, Dan. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I don't know, hopefully you can hear me. Very poorly. Please try again, Representative Larson. Louder. I don't know how I'm gonna to object to this. I know you've worked very hard in the committee on this. I just, I do not know where else to uh, discuss that sessions need to be open by our constitution. And I think this is just allowing it to be easier uh, to be done. And so I will be voting no. I uh, just don't think the public has a chance to uh, speak and debate these topics with us and to help us in uh, understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Larson. Any other members, please raise your hand to the screen so I can see Representative Worf. Mr. Speaker, I would echo the concerns. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I know how important as a, uh, somebody that, that's been on the other side of the aisle with the citizen legislature, I think it's absolutely imperative that we have open access, not only to the, those that are trying to lobby as professionals, but those that lobby as private citizens. And I have uh, over this past pandemic uh, had the opportunity to participate. And I can tell you that it, it is so uh, user unfriendly I think it's a huge disservice. I, I look around, I've had countless emails of people saying they're getting up, they're going to work every day and we should be. And I have to echo that. I, I believe that this pandemic, uh, while it's very serious, it's no longer an unknown thing. Uh, we, we have the ability to treat it. Uh, I, I just think it's a mistake, uh, Mr. Speaker. And so I would, urge the body to consider the oaths that we've taken and question whether or not we do in fact abide by the constitution by having the ability to have people voting from whoever knows where. So with that, Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I will just echo that. I think it's uh, bad and I will be voting against it. Representative Greer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and um, I, I respect the, uh, the opinions of, of those that are, are objecting to this, this rule amendment, um, and I understand it, and I understand their frustration. Uh, I feel the frustration of many of the people of the state of Wyoming, but as I uh, had told many of you, this, this is a matter more related to our staff and the ability to operate as a legislature effectively. And so the members that have been here uh, have experienced that. And, and like the last uh, new representative who has been uh, in, a, in the Capitol many times understands 
there's a tremendous amount of work that goes in behind the scenes. Um, our, our legal staff, our analytical staff, uh, who are all paid, uh, but our session staff. And so our session staff comprises uh, somewhere with about 40 to 45 members uh, here in the legislature. And they're all elderly. They're retired school teachers. They're retired members from the military. They get paid a small salary, but the reason why they're here and the reason why they do that is it's their service to the state of Wyoming. And so where we are right now is we're not able uh, to raise that staff to help us do our job effectively. So I've been here 10 years. Now, some may say that's too long and I'm starting to agree with that. Uh, but I've been here 10 years. I know my way around a bill. I know my way around the amendment process. And it is extremely difficult, extremely difficult to manage and do our job effectively without the work that our staff does. They come in early, they organize our bills, they get our amendments set in order, and they continually keep us up to date. Being if we're if we're five, 10 minutes away from a bill and I see an issue, I can run, get an amendment prepared and it'll be out on the house floor so that we can effectively work that bill. And if, if we were to stay in session and we could go and, and uh, do some of our committee work and we'd come back in, I'm going to hazard a guess that we would be somewhere around 20% effective without the help of our staff. So this rule will allow us in, in the plan that's been laid out by leadership and debated and has been presented to you and to the people of the state of Wyoming uh, has a couple of goals in mind. One is that it'll take and get the committee bills, which were worked through the interim. And I agree that process is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But I will say something about that process. Uh, I had more in, in the minerals committee. We had more people testifying uh, from more uh, from a broader reach across the state of Wyoming than we ever had. We had more citizens testifying during the interim than we did just lobbyists. So there was a benefit to that. What what I asked this body to do is um, is resist the amendment, even though while I understand it, this this get to work next week. Uh, this get our committee bills worked up, this come in, this run the committee bills, this get our staff vaccinated, this get our staff here, sit the ground running on March 1st. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Washett. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have told many people that this virtual legislative session will ensure that we do all of the work associated with being in the legislature without any of the joy that comes along with being together in Cheyenne working jointly. Um, but that said, without this rule, if even one or two of us were quarantined uh, during the session, if we were to meet live, without this rule, those members could not participate remotely and vote. So I think this rule has to be adopted and, and I encourage members to vote in favor of the rule. Thank you, Representative Washett. Representative Gray, and then Representative Bear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, a couple things I wanna say on this. Um, I was on the Rules Committee, and, and I have been a, a, a frequent critic of the rules over the years. Can people hear me? I don't, is it? There's just a bit of a delay. So maybe speak softer, Representative Gray, and uh, there won't be as much echo in the room and on the thing, so okay. just slow down. So um, the original draft of this rule was highly objectionable. It had a lot of problems in it and we worked it with the rules committee and, and I really appreciate the willingness of uh, the rules committee to eliminate those objectionable items. There was a provision in those rules that would have allowed bills to bypass committee we remove that. There was a provision to put into rule a deadline on drafting bills, on numbering bills. Uh, there was a bill number deadline. Uh, there was a bill number uh, limit. 
there was a provision to allow amendments at any time to the rules by majority vote. All those things, and I think there was actually one or two others, we, we removed. And what I see left with this rule, it, it's very important when we, when we debate these things, I think, to look at what the rule is. And I don't see anything about whether we're going to meet remotely. I think in a future motion, I would be happy to entertain uh, that discussion. But all this rule says from 30,000 feet up is that if someone gets COVID and they're quarantined for 15 to 20 days, they don't, they're asymptomatic. They can do whatever they're able to go about their lives that they can participate remotely. Um, and to me, if someone has COVID, they should not be shut out from representing their people for two thirds of the session representing their constituents. And that's really all that is in this rule. And I'm, I think as we progress here today, we should talk about whether we meet virtually for this committee bill process as laid out in the schedule. That's a motion. But this rule, all it says is that if someone has COVID or someone has an issue, they can participate during that period via a remote option. And to me, I don't want to shut someone out two thirds of the session when they're asymptomatic, they're fine. And I think they should be able to participate. So um, I'm going to be voting aye on this rule. Thank you, Representative Bear. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I do appreciate what Representative Gray said, and uh, I do believe that the committee has put a great deal of effort into these rules, and I appreciate that. My concern is different, though. My concern is the vote that is upcoming on these rules. My concern is simply that uh, we are not really meeting Article 3, Section 7, nor Section 11 for a quorum here on the floor for this vote, and it concerns me that later business that is conducted under these new rules may be subject to scrutiny and uh, even possibly called illegitimate. So I'm hoping that someone can clarify that for me. Thank you, Speaker. Majority Floor Leader Summers. Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you. And, you know, just to speak to the constitutionality um, of what we're doing, of, of having virtual members, members remotely, under Article 3, Section 12 of the Wyoming Constitution, the legislature has all the powers of a free state under our Constitution, and each house has the power to determine the rules of its proceedings. The Wyoming Constitution, unlike the federal Constitution, is not a grant of authority to this legislature, but only serves as an explicit restriction on our authority as a sovereign. In other words, unless the Wyoming Constitution specifically restricts our authority, this legislature may proceed in any constitutional manner it deems appropriate. The Wyoming Constitution does not explicitly state the manner in which the legislature must meet. It is therefore appropriate for us to determine the manner in which we meet, including by allowing remote participation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Chairman Olson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I want to address the good representative's question about quorum and, and, uh, and essentially constitutionality. I think that's an important question for this body um, to, to hear, to contemplate, and to understand. It's important to know that we're not, I don't think that we're necessarily treading new ground. Um, we're not the first state that has contemplated virtual quorum or a virtual session. For example, the New Hampshire Supreme Court actually issued an opinion concluding that a house session remotely, either wholly or in part, whereby a quorum could be determined electronically would be in compliance with that state's constitution. Now, I know that's New Hampshire and the New Hampshire Supreme Court and we're Wyoming, and it would be our Wyoming Supreme Court that would determine the constitutionality of the quorum question. However, the reasoning applied in that case would be very applicable to our constitutional provisions. There's no reason to believe that it would be any different, which do not prescribe any method for determining the presence, um, the presence or the absence of any of our members, and it allows the legislature to determine the manner of its proceedings. That's what our constitution does. Very similar in how it would be applied to the New Hampshire constitution. So I think to the extent that 
anyone is um, uh, concerned with with the constitutionality question, I, I find it I find um, comfort in the New Hampshire opinion that what that the quorum question is not really that big of a constitutional question for us to wrestle with today. Um, I would also say that I, um, I think that electronic participation, although not directly, obviously contemplated by the framers of our constitution, because obviously this technology didn't exist at the time. I would say that the Wyoming Supreme Court has held that a thing cannot be excluded from consideration as constitutionally compliant, merely for the reason that it was not in existence at the time of the adoption of the constitution. So if you take those two principles, the exclusion principle and um, the, the New Hampshire ruling, uh, to answer the good representative's question, I, I personally find no constitutional issue that we have to wrestle with and would urge the members to adopt the rule. Is there further discussion? I'm scrolling through the screens, members. So if I, if I don't see you, don't panic. I'm just taking through and trying to get there. Uh, Representative Ottman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and um, members of the 66th. Uh, please bear with me as an, a new legislator and one that's not quite as experienced with uh, protocol and ex, um, history. But I have a couple questions. One of them is, would this set a precedent for all kinds of things? In the past, there's been flus and colds and cancers and, and all kinds of things like that. And were those members um, remotely involved in the legislature? Uh, did they send a proxy? I mean what kind of things were done there. And so I was kind of wondering if this would set a precedent for that type of thing. The other thing is, is I did hear um, Mr. G Representative Greer mentioned um, vaccines. And I'm wondering, is that going to be something that we look at as mandatory? Because I, I could not support that. Um, the other thing is that I'm not sure on the clarity of meeting. Uh, we have the rules set up, we have an idea and a program, but is that going to be definitely what is going on or are we going to wait if there's further funding in the state, whether the governor says that we're under lockdown again or how that might proceed. So I'm not real clear on, on setting up these rules and changing all of this. Um, as far as staffing, there is an experience I've heard of of the people that work here that is invaluable. And I know that that would have to be worked. And I believe with the 60 people in this house that um, we could come up with a solution if that was it. So I just wanted to voice those questions and I thank you. Thank you, Representative Altman. So um, I'm just gonna uh, make a comment about protocol. And um, so on, while we're on the house, we do not address um, each other by name. We don't, only the person in the chair can call someone by name. Now this is, this is not a you know, uh, cardinal offense. This is just uh, something that we do so it doesn't personalize thing. Because what you're doing is you're talking to the chair. You're talking to Mr. Speaker or Mr. Chairman or whoever's in the chair. And then, so we don't refer to another representative by name. You can say the good chairman or my colleague from the land of the sweet water or things like that, but we try not, we, it is our decorum not to use members' names on the floor unless you're in the chair. So thank you for that. You, um, no worries, thank you. Um, Representative Haroldson, and I'm still scrolling, so I'm still looking for folks. Representative Haroldson, you have the floor. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, one thing that I do wanna just bring forward, and I know it's been mentioned a little bit, but there's been an overwhelming amount of uh, the people's voice and the fact that they really want to see the legislature meet. And, and I understand that there may need to be um, some, some small changes to that. I, I definitely believe we need to have an option for people to be able to virtually attend due to the fact that there is, there is a pandemic. There are people who are in quarantine or uh, are, are in, have had close proximity and need to be in quarantine. But I think we also need to listen to the people and, and bring, forward and an in-person or a hybrid uh, type of a uh, session as, as 
fully as we can. And so uh, as much as I, I, I wouldn't say I'm fully against what we have written here, but I, I do really feel like uh, the virtual aspect takes away the, the voice of the people. So thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Representative Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think I shored up my connection a little bit better now. Um, a couple of things I wanted to say, I didn't get to the first point, you know, on the openness, open issue and the quorum issue, I, I agree that there are, there's a potential issue there, but these rules do not address either. And there's a motion that could be made, one in terms of uh, a future session that has been proposed, whether it should be in person or not, or we should have a quorum on the floor. I'm here right now. And, and I intend on being here at the second phase because I believe if we're not sick, we, we, should, we should be here. And I do think that the quorum issue is an, is an interesting question, but we're, we're addressing the rule right now. And, and the rule just says that someone has the ability to participate remotely. And it's, it's about if someone has COVID. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a... It can be a 10 day process to clear, but you would think possibly it could be more. That can be a whole session. You miss 10 days in a session. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, it, it, you've missed almost everything. And so that's, that's really what this rule does if you look down in it. The, the staffing issue that was addressed earlier, I don't see anything on that. We can talk about later whether we come back with a quorum on the floor, that's a motion. Uh, whether we come back in person for the second phase, that's a motion. I think we're going to have a motion on, uh, we have the motion to adjourn, which is not debatable, but we're going to have that as well. But right now we're debating the rule and the rule really, if you look down to it, I mean, it, there's the electronic signature thing in terms of bill submission, but really it's about, can someone participate remotely? And it's about if someone's sick and that that's what, that's what the text of the rule is. And we eliminated so many bad things from this. There's in my opinion that we're not good. And I just, you know, there's, there's definitely other issues. And I, I respect people bringing that up, but these are other motions. And I just ask that we really keep it to the text of the rule that we're debating right now, because really it's, it's bare bones. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Gray. I have uh, Representative Duncan next and then Representative Fortner following. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we need to remember that when we, these rules that we adopt at the beginning, they take us through the entire year. So when we go into the interim, we have to have the capability and the rules set in place for us to, re, to, to be meeting remotely, correct? Uh, putting the question out there to those. And then as well, um, we're, we're in a deficit and so we have saved quite a bit of money being able to um, meet for interim committees remotely. So if we don't have a rule to allow us to meet uh, remotely and to do and perform our duties and such, we can't, we can't do this. We can't save money or anything. So I'm, I'm asking for some clarification on that because that's my understanding is that this, this rule that we make now is what takes us through the entire, um, through the entire year. It's not just session. Um, now it's through the entire year. And can someone answer that for me? Thank you. Thank you. Representative Fortner. I guess my question has to be is if we make this rule this year and the COVID ep epidemic gets worse next year. Is this going to carry over into previous years to come? Uh, is this going to be a precedent? Uh, how, how do we approach uh, not making, not making it a cardinal rule that we're gonna live by this because it was a precedent in 2021. And another question I, I wanna ask is the state of Montana, they're having in session, uh, they're allowing their, their participants, their, their legislature to either participate in session or do it on Zoom. Uh, is that something we're looking at or is that, is that sort of where, the, where we're going with this rule? Uh, I need like the, other representative said, I need some clarification before I really jump in and vote. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably going to have to vote a no on this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Representative Fortner. So for all the members, I'll uh, again remind you that whoever's in this chair, whether it's a speaker, the speaker pro tem, or a chairman on the chairman of the whole, 
um, the Committee of the Whole, excuse me, please address them because I'm acknowledging, they are acknowledging you as a representative that has the floor. You do the courtesy of accepting the floor from them. So um, I think the next, Dr. Hallinan, Representative Hallinan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is, are we going to have a vote later today on the issue of having in-person sessions or not? Uh, I don't know what the format is. So I'd like to know, does anybody know what the format is? Further discussion on the rule. So we're on the rule. And I know there's been a lot of questions that are not pertinent to the rule. Um, and, uh, but we're on the rule, the adoption of joint rule 0001. Further discussion on the rule. Representative Conley. Great. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On and in favor of the rule as it's presented before us. Friends, especially for those of you who are new, um, who I, I don't think there's anybody on this screen or on all three of the screens who doesn't want to meet in person more than me. I truly, truly enjoy our ability to work together and honestly to see each other and sit down next to each other and have those important conversations. But that being said, we have work to do and we have work to do that needs to, in my mind, keep number one, the health and safety of everyone, us, our staff, as well as those who want to and need to participate as first and foremost, that's our obligation. And um, I can't see it now, but somebody had posted earlier that there are hundreds of people who are watching this session right now between the House and the Senate. When you look up in the gallery, you know, you can understand that there might be 10 or 20, but we have hundreds, 370, I just got a message, 370 who are, have been observing. That participation is important. And know that we did it successfully in a special session. Right? To me, that was phenomenal, that we came together knowing that we would prefer to be sitting next to each other, but we got the work of the people done because we needed to. And with our phenomenal staff, we figured out how to do it with technology. What this rule does in front of us is allow us to use that technology to allow each and every one of us to participate and to maximize the participation of the public. I think it is necessary. It is only for the 2021 session. You can take a look at the rule in front of you and you will see repeatedly in B and D that there's the specificity of 2021. This does not last longer than that. And so with that, Mr. Speaker, I would ask for an I vote on this rule. Thank you. Representative Hunt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I don't want to belabor this too much, but um, I, I do want to uh, state uh, something that was brought up is uh, other, other legislatures around us um, are convening more or less uh, for their normal custom. Um, and I, I just want to put it out there, um, especially for some of the newer members, um, and, and not to put, uh, you know, take words from anybody else, but um, leadership uh, has been in contact with uh, either staff or other leadership, fellow leadership from other um, states around us. And while that is true, while we are doing things a little bit differently than what most other states are doing, um, what, I've, what I have come to understand is they have no plan B, right? And so... Um, if they have an outbreak and if a whole pile of their members are quarantined, um, they have no plan B. They don't have anywhere to go with, uh, with the process that they put before themselves. And so um, the whole idea is to try and do this as transparently and as um, expeditiously as possible. And while, um, wh while the situation is different, um, as the, the good minority leader just mentioned, this is for this year and this year alone. Um, hopefully with the rollout of the vaccine and so on, um, by this time next year, this will all be behind us. We will be back in session as normal. Um, for the record, I, I don't love the idea of the rule. I don't love the idea of the setup. Um, I don't love the idea of any of it. Um, but I think that leadership has worked very hard, um, really put in overtime to 
um, try and get us here today so that we can proceed um, as as reasonably as possible. Um, and so please vote aye. Thank you. All right, thank you members. I'm scrolling through the screen. So if you're wanting to um, discuss the rule, we're on the rule, raise your hand. Representative Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just wanted to clarify a couple things that the answer earlier to the question of whether this is setting a precedent. We explicitly set up this rule so that it expires after the end of the 2021 general session. It's very important to us. And, and we did that in the special session as well. And that's actually why this temporary rule is being presented is because the special session temporary rule that we passed uh, also expired. Um, so it's very important we have those expirations. And I think that's, and the other thing is I wanna address the openness issue. I mean, we, we have a gallery and, and it is open. Now, I think the quorum issue is an interesting uh, question and one that should be explored, but it's, it's outside of, uh, it's outside of uh, th what, what the text of this rule is as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Gray. Majority Floor Leader Summers. Mr. Speaker, thank you. And just to answer a couple of the questions, I believe it's the fifth day of session when we adopt kind of final rules for the 66th. And, uh, and then as it relates to precedence, you know, absolutely the, the things that we do in this body serve us as rules that, as of themselves. And we have in fact already had a special session remotely. Um, and, and so, We've done that, we did that successfully. It wasn't challenged in a court of law. So uh, with that, I would urge the adoption of this amendment and call for the question unless there's more debate. Thank you. Does any further members want to discuss the amendment? And I am scrolling and I'm looking at the boxes. So be patient if I'm not to your box yet. Any other members wish to put, you, okay, I see Representative Worf, sorry. Your hand was down below your name tag there, Representative Worf, please proceed. Yes. Mr. Speaker, thank you once again for the opportunity to comment. And I, I guess as I listen to the comments, what, what troubles me the most is we're passing a rule uh, that, that is basically obligating those of us that want to be here to stay home. And, and I, I look at it a little different. I, I would much rather see the rule that allows us to assemble and those that, that for health concerns or reasons that, that they don't wanna be here, that they should be able to stay home and, and participate uh, via Zoom. But I, I really think as a body, we should be here doing the people's work. And, and I, I will say that this just does not work like the normal session. Um, you know, we got to be connected to Mike. We, we can't stray from our camera. Um, it, it really limits the participation. And I can't say it enough how much I, you know, I know it, it's facilitated it in some ways, but I, I really, having, having gone through this, I, I can just tell you, I, I don't think it's a very effective way. If, if you're somebody that knows the system, you can participate. If you're somebody that, that's not computer literate, which I think a lot of our citizens maybe fall into that category. But I just, I think this, to me, I would much rather be doing a, a live session, allowing people to opt out if they felt uh, the need. And I think that would resolve a lot of my heartburn. I don't want to obligate people to be here who feel threatened or, or feel unsafe. But those of us that want to be here to do what we were elected to do should be allowed to do that. So. For that, I appreciate your time, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Any other members? I'm scrolling through the screen, scrolling through the screen. Question. Representative Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I just wanna, you know, I don't wanna repeat too much, but this, this rule allows a hybrid setup as was laid out by uh, the representative from uh, Evanston. Uh, it allows people who are sick to participate virtually. Now, the question of whether we come in in a quorum or whether we do a Zoom format is a different motion. This is just about can somebody, if they are sick or 
in a different situation, participate remotely. And again, I really think it's important we keep it to the text of this rule. So I urge an I vote. Thank you. Thank you, members. Any further discussion on the joint rule 0001? Further discussion? Question. Question. I see nobody else. All right. Members, you are voting on joint rule 0001. A majority adopts the motion. Chief Clerk, please call the roll. Andrew. Aye. Baker. Aye. Banks. Aye. Bear. No. Blackburn. Aye. Brown. Brown. Please restate your vote, Representative Brown. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Burt. No. Clawson. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Crago. Aye. Duncan. Aye. Eklund. Aye. Ayer. Aye. Flitner. Aye. Fortner. No. Gray. Aye. Greer. Aye. Callanan. Aye. Haroldson. No. Harshman. Aye. Heiner. No. Henderson. Aye. Hunt. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Kenner. Aye. Knapp. Aye. Larson Lloyd. Aye. Larson Dan. No. McGuire. No. Aye. Martinez. Aye. Nyman. Aye. Newsom. Aye. Nicholas. Aye. Oakley. Aye. Obermuller. Aye. O'Hearn. Aye. Olson. Aye. Ottman. No. Paxton. Aye. Provenza. Aye. Brosco. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. Sherwood. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Summers. Aye. Stiff. Aye. Stivar. Aye. Sweeney. Aye. Walters. Aye. Wash it. Aye. Western. Aye. Work. No. Williams. No. Wilson. Aye. Winter. No. Yin. Aye. Zawanitzer. Aye. Mr. Speaker. Aye. Closing vote. Are there any changes? Closing vote. The vote is closed. 50 aye, 10 no. By your vote, you have adopted joint rule 001. Members, I should have done something, uh, mentioned something. When the chief clerk has taken the role and then she asks if there's any changes, if you would place your hand up in, in your front of your face, in front of your screen, so she can see it, she will call on you and ask you to change if you want to change your vote. And so, if I had voted aye and I wanted to change my vote, I'd put my hand up to the screen, and she would say Barlow, aye to no, and that would record my vote as a changed vote. So that's how that's how you can do that. We do it on the floor. We the chief clerk recognizes you standing up. If the representative stands up because they want to change their vote and the chief clerk would call on you and say, Representative Barlow, I to no or no to I, either way. So I just want to tell you, that's a, the process. It's a normal process in our legislative process, but we didn't maybe explain that part. So I apologize um, to the new members. So thank you. Um, by your vote, you have adopted joint rule 100 or 0001. Do, are there any other amendments that would be presented to the body at this time to the rules? Are there any other amendments to be presented to the body to the rules? If 
you have an amendment, please raise your hand to the screen. Seeing none, being there are no further amendments, the permanent House and joint rules of the House of Representatives for the 65th Wyoming Legislature as amended today, pending mirror adoption by the Wyoming Senate are adopted as the temporary rules for, the gen for this general session. Now I want to clarify that this came up during the, um, some of the discussion on, our, on this rules adoption, the amendment was that um, on the fifth, under these rules that we just adopted, on the fifth legislative day, the body will take up consideration of the permanent rules. And that's another time by a majority vote that you will have the opportunity to um, amend the rules of the House of Representatives and the joint rules. So there's another chance to do that. Now, after the adoption of the permanent rules of the House of Representatives and the joint rules, which have to be identical, of course, then it takes a two thirds vote to amend the rules. So we just did something on a majority vote today. We have another opportunity to amend them with our permanent rules on our fifth legislative day. And then after that, to the point that some people brought, then we live with what we have adopted for the remainder of the legislative term, two years, unless they are amended by a two thirds vote of the body. So thank you. I hope that might be helpful in seeing a, 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 uh, some possibilities for some of the issues that some of you brought today. All right, we'll continue. We're getting very close to our, our, um, our time with the uh, governor, listening to the governor's address. So I'll continue with uh, the appointment of standing committees. I appoint the house, I heard somebody Mr. raise it. Speaker, I just um, had a quick question. Representative it, Worf. W when do the days start? You said in five days. When would that five-day period be? Could you elaborate? Thank you. Thank you, Representative Worf. So the fifth legislative day, today is number one. So if we convened, whether it's tomorrow or in two weeks or a month, that would be the second day. And then you would count legislative days and as you saw, legislative days in that rule was when either the House or the Senate is in, is in session. So, um, so anyway, so we'll, we'll be working together for four more days or three more days. And then the fifth day, we will take up the rules. So it does not include committee time. It does not include weekends when we're not in session. It's only days that we're in session. So thank you, Representative Worf. I hope that was clarifying. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, uh, I, so now I'm appointing House Standing Committees for the House of Representatives 66th Wyoming Legislature as are shown in the distributed list. And members, this is the list that were distributed by our chief clerk. I further appoint Representative Duncan as chairman of the Courtesy Committee, along with Representatives Brown and Clifford for the general session of the Wyoming House of Representatives 66th Wyoming Legislature to attend two courtesies as are from time to time deemed official by the membership. The next order of business is um, a, a no Mr. notice to Chairman. our government. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Walters. Thank you, floor. Mr. Chairman. Uh, there is a, a typographical uh, correction that needs made in committee number five as Representative Western's name is misspelled. It's missing an N at the end of the name. Well, I'm sure we can take care of that. And I appreciate pointing that out. Thank you. And I'm surprised that Representative Western did not notice that. All right, spell check your own names, folks. Um, so this, the next order of business is notifying the governor. The chief clerk is directed to notify his excellency, the governor, that this general session of a House of Representatives, 66th Wyoming Legislature is duly organized and ready to receive any communication he may desire to submit. I further direct the Chief Clerk to notify the Senate that the House of Representatives, 66th Wyoming Legislature, <clears throat> is duly organized and re ready to receive any communications they may desire to submit. 
Now, members of the body, we're at kind of an um, uh, interesting point here. We're 10, 15 minutes from the governor's address, which will be 2 o'clock and streamed on live. And I've got about probably 15 minutes, 18 minutes worth of reading in of bills and referral of bills. So I think it would probably be most appropriate that we actually um, recess for um, the time being, and we will reconvene 10 minutes upon the completion of the governor's address. 10 minutes upon completion of the governor's address. So the House of Representatives will stand and we have further business to do. We have further business, but we will stand in recess until 10 minutes upon after the completion of the governor's address. Thank you very much. The House is in recess. Please mute your microphones and um, turn off your cameras. Thank you. And I think that's an amendment to the rules. You know, I think they just amend the rules. You know, what they should have done is brought an amendment. I mean, I, I, yeah. if, they, if they want to put them on the floor. Representative Stivar, you're live. That's the only reason I think, Michael. That's why we need to be here.
The House will please come back to order. Members, if you'd please turn on your cameras. The House will please come back to order. On behalf of, half of the House of Representatives, I want to thank His Excellency, Governor Mark Gordon, for his words. We look forward to his complete state of the state when we convene, reconvene. At this time, um, for the members of the body, we start our, um, the real work of the legislature. We start talking about bills. And the first item of business is the introduction of bills and the referral to committee. Now, this is just a lot of you hearing myself and the chief clerk go back and forth, bouncing bills. But the ultimate goal is to send those bills to the committees that you are all been assigned to. And you'll note that I think we're at about 38 bills that, we will, that will be worked next week during our committee meetings. And those committee meetings will be held virtually so that, um, well, basically because of lack of staffing, i.e. session staff. As I've mentioned to folks, we have two kinds of staff. We have both LSO professional staff, and then we have our session staff. And our session staff are the ones that um, we're, we are, are short of, and our LSO staff is gonna be trying to help, helping fill in for those, so for our committee work. So at this time, we'll start, um, we are at the order of business of the introduction, reading, and reference of bills. The first bill for our consideration and give me a pause for a second. I got to get to my script. And um, ladies and gentlemen of the house and the public, if I can just follow the script, I usually don't get in trouble. So the first bill for our consideration is House Bill 31. House Bill 31, sponsored by Judiciary. First reading of the bill. Board of Coroner Standards Investigation Authority. House Bill 31 is referred to committee number one, judiciary. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 34. House Bill 34, sponsored by judiciary. First reading of the bill. Youthful offender program amendments. House Bill 34 is referred to committee number one, judiciary. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 35. House Bill 35, sponsored by Judiciary. First reading of the bill. Theft Statute Amendment. House Bill 35 is referred to Committee Number 1, Judiciary. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 42. House Bill 42, sponsored by Judiciary. First reading of the bill. Chancery Court Vacancy Amendments. House Bill 42 is referred to Committee Number 1, Judiciary. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 47. House Bill 47, sponsored by Appropriations. First reading of the bill. Department of Family Services Indigent Burial Program. House Bill 47 is referred to Committee Number 2, Appropriations. Next bill for our consideration, House Bill 48. House Bill 48, sponsored by Appropriations. First reading of the bill. Community Juvenile Services Block Grant Program. House Bill 48 is referred to Committee Number Two Appropriations. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 49. House Bill 49, sponsored by Appropriations. House Bill 49 is referred to Committee Number Read, Two. Reading whoop, of the bill. Please. First reading of the bill. Agency fee revisions. House. Bill number 49 is referred to committee number two, appropriations. See members, that's why you follow the script. It says it right there in front of me. Thank you, Chief Clerk. The next bill for our um, consideration is House Bill 50. House Bill 50, sponsored by appropriations. First reading of the bill. Local government distribution revisions. House Bill 50 is referred to committee number two, appropriations. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 30. House Bill 30, sponsored by Revenue. First reading of the bill. Public Utility Assessment. House Bill 30 is referred to committee number three, Revenue. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 55. 
House Bill 55, sponsored by Revenue. First reading of the bill. Tobacco tax. House Bill 55 is referred to committee number three, Revenue. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 2. House Bill 2, sponsored by Education. First reading of the bill. School buildings and facilities study. House Bill 2 is referred to committee number four, Education. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 5. House Bill 5, sponsored by Education. First reading of the bill. School buildings, major maintenance. House Bill 5 is referred to Committee Number 4, Education. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 61. House Bill 61, sponsored by Education. First reading of the bill. School Finance Recalibration. House Bill 61 is referred to Committee Number 4, Education. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 62. House Bill 62, sponsored by Education. First reading of the bill. Suicide prevention. House Bill 62 is referred to committee number four, education. Next bill for our consideration, House Bill 44. House Bill 44, sponsored by agriculture, state and public lands and water resources. First reading of the bill. Omnibus water bill construction. House Bill 44 is referred to committee number five, agriculture. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 45. House Bill 45, sponsored by Agriculture. First reading of the bill. Changes to waste, uh, water right, notice requirements for hearing. House Bill 45 is referred to committee number five, Agriculture. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 51. House Bill 51, sponsored by Agriculture, State and Public Lands and Water Resources. First reading of the bill. Meat processing programs. House Bill 51 is referred to committee number five, agriculture. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 53. House Bill 53 sponsored by agriculture, state and public land and water resources. First reading of the bill. Invasive plant species. House Bill 53 is referred to committee number five, agriculture. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 58. House Bill 58, sponsored by Travel, Recreation, Wildlife, and Cultural Resources. House Bill 58 is referred to... Reading, committee, first reading. Oh, first reading of the bill. Thank you, Chief Clerk. State Parks Account Expenditure Authority. House Bill 58 is referred to committee number six, Travel. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 59. House Bill 59, sponsored by Travel, Recreation, Wildlife, and Cultural Resources. First reading of the bill. Public Health Emergencies, Immunity Amendments 3. House Bill 59 is referred to committee number six, Travel. Next bill for consideration is House Bill 60. House Bill 60, sponsored by Travel, Recreation, Wildlife, and Cultural Resources. First reading of the bill. Wild Game Rendering in Edible Portion. House Bill 60 is referred to committee number six, travel. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 66. House Bill 66, sponsored by Travel, Recreation, Wildlife, and Cultural Resources. First reading of the bill. 2021 large project funding. House Bill 66 is referred to committee number six, travel. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 13. House Bill 13, sponsored by Corporations, Elections, and Political Subdivisions. First reading of the bill. Alcoholic Beverage Regulation. House Bill 13 is referred to Committee Number 7, Corporations. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 15. House Bill 15, sponsored by Corporations, Elections, and Political Subdivisions. First reading of the bill. Department of Transportation Communication Facilities. House Bill 15 is referred to Committee Number 7, Corporations. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 27. House Bill 27, sponsored by Corporations, Elections, and Political Subdivisions. First reading of the bill. Business Code Revisions. 
House Bill 27 is referred to committee number seven, corporations. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 29. House Bill 29, sponsored by Corporations, Elections, and Political Subdivisions. First reading of the bill. Burials for indigent persons. House Bill 29 is referred to committee number seven, corporations. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 17. House Bill 17, sponsored by Transportation, Highways, and Military Affairs. First reading of the bill. Range management at military training areas. House Bill 17 is referred to committee number eight, transportation. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 18. House Bill 18, sponsored by Transportation, Highways, and Military Affairs. First reading of the bill. Military training memorials. House Bill 18 is referred to committee number eight, transportation. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 19. House Bill 19, sponsored by Transportation, Highways, and Military Affairs. First reading of the bill. Antique motor vehicles. House Bill 19 is referred to committee number eight, transportation. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 25. House Bill 25, sponsored by Transportation, Highways, and Military Affairs. First reading of the bill. Tribal vehicle registration exemption implementation. House Bill 25, referred to committee number eight, transportation. The next bill for our um, consideration is House Joint Resolution 1. House Joint Resolution 1, sponsored by Transportation, Highways, and Military Affairs. First reading of the resolution. Traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress treatments. House Joint Resolution 1 is referred to committee number eight, transportation. The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 6. House Bill 6, sponsored by Minerals Business and Economic Development. First reading of the bill. Trust company. Chief Clerk, I think we lost you for just a moment. Would you um, read the bill again, please? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Trust company amendments. House Bill 6 is referred to Committee Number 9, Minerals. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 8. House Bill 8, sponsored by Minerals, Business, and Economic Development. First reading of the bill. Consumer Credit Amendments. House Bill 8 is referred to Committee Number 9, Minerals. Next bill for our consideration. Did I lose you, sir? The next bill for our consideration is House Bill 9, Chief Clerk. Okay, House Bill 9, sponsored by Minerals, Business, and Economic Development. First reading of the bill. Short time compensation program. House Bill 9 is referred to committee number 9, Minerals. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 10. House Bill 10, sponsored by Minerals, Business, and Economic Development. First reading of the bill. COVID-19 large business relief programs. House Bill 10 is referred to committee number nine, minerals. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 11. House Bill 11 sponsored by minerals business and economic development. First reading of the bill. Oil and gas production tax exemption. House Bill 11 is referred to committee number nine, minerals. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 3. House Bill 3, sponsored by Labor, Health, and Social Services. First reading of the bill. Certified Addiction Practitioner Certification Amendment. House Bill 3 is referred to Committee Number 10, Labor. Next bill for our consideration is House Bill 38. House Bill 38, sponsored by Labor, Health, and Social Services. First reading of the bill. Community behavioral health priority populations. House Bill 38 is referred to committee number 10, labor. 
All right, Chief Clerk, I think that's all on my list. Is that consistent with yours? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So members, just, um, just to remind you, those 38 bills that we just introduced are now eligible to be worked by the committees that you serve on. And that's the work that you'll un undertake next week as you start convening your committee work um, in a virtual manner um, to, to work these bills and prepare them to go into our session um, and they'll be ready to go to work and you'll have done the, the, the most important work of our session, i.e. the, um, the uh, committee work. So we look forward to your, for your amendments and the good work that you'll do there. I gotta get back to the right part of the script. I think we're ready for messages, sir. Um, Madam Chief Clerk, would House Bill 4 be available to be referred to a committee, please? Chief Clerk? Yes, sir. I was digging. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I apologize. It seems like we maybe didn't have a com as complete a list as we'd hoped. So um, next bill for our consideration is House Bill 4. House Bill 4, uh, sponsored by Labor. First reading of the bill. Mental Health Professions Practiced Act Amendments. House Bill 4 is referred to committee number 10, Labor. Now everybody has their full slate of bills for their good committee work. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Thank you, Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker. Mr. S uh, Majority Floor Leader. No, no, sir. It's Representative Eklund. Representative Could Eklund, my apologies. I wasn't looking at the screen. Yes, Mr. Speaker, would you explain, we're in a new format. How are these, will the bills be posted somehow? ahead of time by somebody or did the, ch the chairman need to do it? I'm not sure how we do that. Thank you, Chairman Eklund. So members, in the rules that we um, adopted earlier today, we um, allowed or gave ourselves uh, the opportunity to post electronically. And so once the chairman, you as a chairman and the other nine chairmen, um, outlined the bills that they want to work in their committee meeting and notify LSO staff they will make that electronic posting on your behalf. And, I, and so that, all you have to do is get the order of the agenda that you'd like, and then they, that will be taken care of. But there will, be, there will be a discussion between you and the LSO staff arrange, helping arrange that. The other thing I would um, um, suggest is the bills that we're working next week as we have our committee meetings, your committee meetings are gonna be essentially established on the same dates i.e. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, as you would normally hold your committee meeting. So if you're a Tuesday morning meeting, you have the option of Tuesday morning or Thursday morning to have a cop, uh, meeting. And we've established a, um, um, this LSO has worked with us to establish a schedule where nobody has a conflicting co committee. If you're on two committees, they're not gonna meet at the same time. So you'll be able to fully participate in your committee meeting. So, the other thing that you will, as chairman, and the, and the members of the body won't see this until the uh, agenda comes out, but as chairman, you will receive a notice from LSO asking you to approve the bills that we just introduced. So when you receive that memo from our LSO staff, please respond to the chief clerk and accept the bills that were just referred to your committee. I got the head nod from the chief clerk, so I think I got it close. All right. Thank you very much. Madam Chief Clerk, um, messages from the Senate. Message number one, Mr. Speaker, this is to inform you that the following named persons are duly elected members of the Senate of the 66th legislature of the state of Wyoming. Senate District Two, Senator Boner. Senate District Four, Senator Nethercott. Senate District Six, 
Senator Bouchard, Senate District 8, Senator Ellis, Senate District Number 10, Senator Furphy, Senate District 12, Senator Cobb, Senate District 14, Senator Baldwin, Senate District 16, Senator Dockstadter, Senate District 18, Senator French, Senate District 20, Senator Cooper, Senate District 22, Senator Kinski, Senate District 24, Senator McCowan, Senate District 27, Senator Salazar, Senator or Senate District 28, Senator Anderson, Senate District 30, Senator Scott, sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. Message number two, Mr. Speaker, the following are the officers of the Senate for the 66th Wyoming State Legislature. Senator Dan Dockstetter, President. Senator Larry Hicks, Vice President. Senator Ogden Driscoll, Majority Floor Leader. Senator Chris Rothfuss, Minority Floor Leader. Senator Mike Guru, Minority Whip. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. Message number three, Mr. Speaker, the following named persons are the Senate employees for the 66th Wyoming State Legislature. Ellen Thompson, Chief Clerk, Judy Parks, Staff Supervisor, Dick Morrison, Sergeant at Arms. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Cle Chief Clerk. Message number four, Mr. Speaker, this is to inform you that the Senate has adopted the permanent Senate and joint rules of the 65th Wyoming State Legislature as the temporary state and Senate and joint rules of the 66th Wyoming State Legislature general session with the following amendment, JR0001 approved. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Ellen, uh, Senate Chief Clerk. Message number five, Mr. Pre Mr. Speaker, the President of the Senate has appointed the following standing committees. Committee number one, Judiciary, Tara Nethercott, Chairman, Ed Cooper, Tim French, John Kolb, RJ Cost. Committee number two, Appropriations, Drew Perkins, Chairman, Larry Hicks, Dave Kinski, Sherry Steinmetz, Mike Guru. Committee number three, Revenue, Kale Case, Chairman, Fred Baldwin, Ted James, or Tom James, uh, Stefan Pappas, Wendy Schuler. Committee number four, Education, Charles. Charles Scott, Chairman, Affie Ellis, Bo Beitman, Tim Salazar, Chris Rothfuss. Committee number five, Agriculture, State and Public Lands and Water Resources. Brian Boner, Chairman, Anthony Bouchard, Tim French, RJ Cost, Jeff Wasserberger. Committee number six, Travel, Recreation, Wildlife and Cultural Resources. Affie Ellis, Chairman, Bill Landon, Tim Salazar, Wendy Schuler, Wend uh, Mike Guru. Committee number seven, corporations, elections, and political subdivisions. Ogden Driscoll, Chairman, Brian Boner, Cal Case, Tara Nethercott, Charles Scott. Committee number eight, transportation, highways, and military affairs. Bill Landon, Chairman, James Lee Anderson, Dan Furphy, Troy McGowan, Stephen Pappas. Committee number nine, Minerals, Business and Economic Development. James Lee Anderson, Chairman, Bo Beitman, Ed Cooper, Jeff Wasserberger, Chris Rothfuss. Committee number 10, Labor, Health and Social Services. Fred Baldwin, Chairman, Anthony Bouchard, Dan Furphy, Lynn Hutchings, Troy McCowan. Committee number 11, Journal, John Kolb, Chairman, Dan Furphy. Committee number 12, Rules and Procedure, Dan Dockstetter, Chairman, Ogden Driscoll, Larry Hicks, Chris Rothfuss, Mike Guru. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. Message number six, Mr. President, or Mr. Speaker, uh, President Dockstetter has named Senator Bo Beitman to temporarily replace Senator Jim Anderson as Acting Chairman of the Senate Minerals Business and Economic Development Standing Committee. This change was necessary uh, because of a temporary absence of Senator Anderson, who will resume his chairmanship upon his return. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. Message number seven, Mr. Speaker, the Senate 66 Wyoming State Legislature General Session has now been called to order by President Dan Dockstetter and is ready to receive any com communications you wish to submit. 
Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. And message number eight. Mr. Speaker, the Senate 66 Wyoming State Legislature General Session has adjourned by adopting the following motion. That the Senate 66 Wyoming State Legislature with the consent of the House of Wyoming, or House of Representatives be adjourned from the 2021 general session until January 27th, 2021, unless jointly called back into session at an earlier date by the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Number two, that the House of Representatives specifically concur in any identical motion adopted by the Senate. And number three, that if the House of Representatives fails to concur in the action of the Senate under paragraphs one and two of this motion, by adopting an identical motion applicable to the House of Representatives, the Senate 66 Wyoming State Legislature general session is adjourned until called back into session by the President of the Senate. Sincerely, Ellen Thompson, Senate Chief Clerk. Mr. Majority Floor Leader, that clears the desk. Mr. Would you please turn on your volume? Mr. Majority Floor Leader. No, please use your neighbor's microphone. Mr. Speaker, can you hear me now? Yes, and so members, this happens on the floor often when we have microphone problems front and back. So this is not the first time this has happened. Just telling you. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Please. I move the following. One, that the House of Representatives 66 Wyoming State Legislature with the consent of the Senate be adjourned from the 2021 general session until January 27, 2021, unless jointly called back into session at an earlier date by the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate. Two, that the Senate specifically concurs in any identical motion adopted by the House of Representatives. And three, that if the Senate fails to concur in the action of the House of Representatives under paragraphs one and two of this motion, by adopting an identical motion applicable to the Senate, the House of Representatives 66 Wyoming State Legislature general session is adjourned until called back into session by the Speaker of the House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Majority Floor Leader. You've heard the Majority Floor Leader's motion. So this is a motion to adjourn and you've, you've heard it for a date certain. And we are gonna ask the Chief Clerk to call a roll. So this will be a roll call on the motion of the Majority Floor Leader to adjourn to a date certain. Chief Clerk, please call the roll. Chief Clerk, I think you're still muted. So sorry, that's my fault. Andrew. Aye. Baker. Aye. Banks. Aye. Fair. No. Blackburn. Aye. Brown. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Burt. No. Clausen. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Connolly. Aye. Crago. Aye. Duncan. Aye. Eckland. Aye. Ayer. Aye. Flitner. Aye. Fortner. No. Gray. No. Greer. Aye. Helenan. Aye. Haroldson. No. Harshman. Aye. Heiner. No. Henderson. Aye. Hunt. Aye. Jennings. No. Kenner. Aye. Now. Aye. Larson Lloyd. Aye. Larson Dan. No. McGuire. Aye. Martinez. 
Nyman. No. Newsom. Aye. Nicholas. Aye. Oakley. Aye. Obermuller. Aye. O'Hearn. Aye. Olson. Aye. Ottman. No. Paxton. Aye. Provenza. Aye. Roscoe. Aye. Schwartz. Aye. Sherwood. Aye. Simpson. Aye. Summers. Aye. Stiff. Aye. Stivar. No. Sweeney. Aye. Walters. Aye. Washit. Aye. Western. Aye. Worf. No. Williams. No. Wilson. Aye. Winter. No. Yin. Excused. Excused. Wanitzer. Aye. Mr. Speaker. Aye. Closing vote. Are there any changes? Closing vote. The vote is closed. 45 aye, 14 no, one excused. Thank you, Chief Clerk. Members, by your vote, you have moved to adjourn until January 27th, 2021, unless jointly called at an earlier date by the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate. Members, congratulations on your first completed legislative day. As you saw, we ginned up a lot of work for next week. Your committees will go to work. You'll do good things for the state of Wyoming. We'll get some dust knocked off, but we're gonna do some good things. So congratulations to all of the 66th, our Senate colleagues, and the House is adjourned.